Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Fireside Chat. Uh, I'm very excited to be joined today by Manash, who is the Head of Product at PepsiCo. Manash, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks, Helen. I'm really excited to be here today. I uh, hope you're doing well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so maybe let's start by learning a bit more about your personal story. How did you get started in the tech industry and in product management? Sure. So, you know, I have to go back a few years back. Uh, I started my career as an engineer with, uh, with Oracle. Uh, and we were building the foundation of the cloud, uh, cloud computing uh, way back in 2004, 2006. Uh, and I was building basically work. I was building AP, the early versions of APIs and, and cloud capabilities. Then post my MBA, I decided to change career and went into product management. Uh, and I've worked for Thomson Reuters across five countries and three continents. Uh, uh, I eventually came to, coming to New York, uh, moved over to payments uh, to lead uh, digital payments uh, as a director and then VP for MasterCard. Uh, and then eventually uh, joined PepsiCo as head of product management, product design and operations when basically the size of the team was zero in 2018. Uh, and now we are close to close to 60. Wow, amazing. And so um, job titles obviously fluctuate between companies, between industries, like anything can change a title in product management. So what does head of product look like for you? Can you maybe walk us through an average day to day and some of your responsibilities? Sure. So, uh, so, at the, uh, like, so from, from the head of product role perspective, right, I am responsible for five areas, right? So the first is vision, right? So typically, we when we look at uh, product vision, we look at as a as a stack. You know, as we you know we are looking at predominantly majority of the things as stacks. Uh, so product vision is in the middle of that stack, right? On the top, you have the organization uh, vision, organization goals, right? And that rolls up into product vision, which then rolls down to product. Uh, Pro strategy and product roadmap, right? So as a head of product, which is like in kind of like the CTO of product for my for my organizations, I'm responsible for uh, product vision and then how does it influence the organization goals and organization strategy? And at the same time, how does that roll up to product strategy and product uh, roadmap for my individual teams that roll up to me? Um, the other parts which are responsibilities are building the culture, very critical, right? So. Again, PepsiCo is not known as a technology organization. So, uh, you know, building the right set of culture that helps us build a product, not only for end consumers, but also internal tools that builds competitive advantage. So that's the second area. Um, and the third area is hiring talent. You know, I've been very passionate about, you know, hiring the right talent and building the right uh, structure within my teams, right? In terms of pods, uh, so that we can make decisions fast, we can move uh, in an agile manner. Uh, so hiring talent is also a key part of my of my job. And then fourth is uh, execution. Like so, how do how do I as a leader of the organizations help my team to execute uh, in a seamless manner, in a faster manner? Uh, and the five is the fifth piece is uh, you know creating a, a uh, inclusive uh, and and culture which has a lot of diversity, right? So my team has 60 percent plus uh, women in technology as well as people from underrepresented areas, right? So so that's a very core pillar of of my role, right? So those are the five roles, right? So vision, uh, culture, uh, talent development, uh, execution, and diversity and inclusion. That's quite quite a lot of hats that you have to wear all at the same time. Um, so as as you mentioned, PepsiCo maybe. Maybe the average person, when they hear the name PepsiCo, they don't instantly think of technology. Can you tell us a little bit about the solutions that you're trying to build and the problems that you're trying to solve? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a really good question. And, and I get this question all the time, like, look, what is product in PepsiCo? What is technology in PepsiCo? So, so way back in 20, uh, 2017, 2018, I think PepsiCo did a really great job in thinking that, okay, in order to win in uh, in e-commerce, right, and digital commerce, they have to build a technology-first organization. Uh, so PepsiCo e-commerce was uh, created as a concept of, how do I say that, like an incubation center or, or a, a center of excellence, right? Uh, and and we, our charter was that we would build capabilities across direct-to-consumer, B2B, uh, supply chain, and marketplace that helps us uh, build competitive advantage uh, in, in the space, right? So 
you know, over the last three and a half years, we have built capabilities in retail media, right? So uh, where we are using our API connections with Amazons, Walmart, Instacart, and the likes of those, you know, retail marketplaces and using platform and machine learning to make decisions in terms of uh, which products should we promote in those platform, what price, what messaging, what time, right? So all those decisions are now being taken with the combinations of platform, APIs, data, uh, and machine learning, right? So that's a big uh, part and DNA of our, of our uh, endeavor. The other areas that we are investing a lot is supply chain, right? So supply chain, both in terms of how do you do uh, how do you manage orders from, let's say, Amazon or Walmart, right, where you are receiving those orders and then pushing it into their warehouses, but also think about the new format stores which are coming, right? So Amazon Go stores, uh, DoorDash is coming out with Door, uh, like Dash Smart. Uh, you have um, you have GoPuff, Instacart, they're coming out with lots of micro fulfillment centers. Uh, how do you build supply chain capabilities to address all those new agile formats which are coming up? And the third is like, you know, as we expand into direct to consumer and B2B, uh, even if you're, uh, you know, ordering from Amazon or you're ordering from direct to consumer stores like SolarStream or Hilo Life, it's our, our warehouses from which the shipments is happening, right? So supply chain is a big part of, of the capabilities they're developing. And then end-to-end -end stack across B2B, uh, direct to consumer, and also how do you experiment in new areas like IoT? So, so, uh, so we have been building across all those verticals and and figuring out, uh, you know, build by or borrow decisions like which makes sense to build uh, inside within our our scope of our team and where does it make sense to basically look at external capabilities uh, to augment our solutions. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a really exciting space to be in at the moment. Um, speaking of that, let's dive into hiring a little bit because I know that's a really juicy topic that we can definitely get our teeth into. Um, you're yeah. hiring at the moment for a lot yeah. of different roles. You were telling me before we went online. Um, what would you say is the secret source that you're looking for in candidates? Who are the people mm -hmm. that you really want on your teams? Yeah, yeah. So let me tell you a little bit construct of my team, right? So my team right now has three areas, right? So there is uh, product management, uh, and I have uh, I have five directors of products right now rolling uh, rolling up to me. Uh, we have design and I recently hired my head of design from Facebook and then we have the operations team, right? So supply chain operations, data analysts that's helping us run our direct to consumer B2B marketplaces uh, and those pieces. So in all of that, uh, let's say if you are looking at product management, uh, there are four things that we look at, right? So we look at, uh, you know, people who are, uh, who have a strong uh, product vision, right? Uh, Second is uh, they are customer centric, right? So the history of uh, building capabilities with uh, either end consumer or end enterprise uh, stakeholder as as being basically the core core uh, you know product development thesis, right? Um, so I talked about um, you know, uh, and then third is collaboration, right? So people who who can work in a collaborative environment uh, and and can bring lot of uh, lot of thoughts and uh, and ideas together from different stakeholders and then and drive, drive engagement with them in order to you know, move the teams towards a particular goal. Uh, and the fourth is execution, right? So who has a focus of not only coming out with ideas, but can also help the team execute, right? So if you're looking at product management, those are the four areas that we would look at. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, and where's the first place that people should go if they're interested in getting a job at PepsiCo? Do you have a careers page that we can point them in the direction of? Yeah, so if you if you go to PepsiCo Carriers and if you if you search for e-commerce, right, so you will see the range of profiles that uh, that we would be hiring for right now. And uh, right now in my organization, which is a technology organization, we are hiring for a lot of roles across product management, both in terms of direct to consumer as well as enterprise tools and platform. Um, we are also hiring for principal designers, design managers, uh, operational analysts, data analysts. And a lot of engineer roles are currently open, right? So uh, if you are interested, feel free to reach out to me or go to our carrier page. Uh, and, and I'm sure we would, we would be able to reach out to you and drive engagement. From there. Exciting. Um, and there's, there's something that I'd love to chat with you about that we, were, we briefly touched on um, before we went live. Um, it's this idea of hiring people into product management roles who may not have product management experience, kind of solving that 
chicken and egg problem of how do I get PM experience if I've never been a PM before and all of this sort of thing. Um, yeah. What's your approach to giving people an opportunity to show off their PM skills in that role if they yeah. haven't if they haven't had that role before? Yeah, no, I think that's a good question. I think uh, you know when I moved from being an engineer to uh, to getting into product management, we did had that. I mean, product management is still, I would say, a, a, it's still in in the early or fifth, last ten years of you know of the industries where you see more product management managers having an official title of product managers, right? When I was an engineer, and I, I and I and I talk about it with my other colleagues that. Um, at Oracle, we used to be both the engineer, the designer, and the product manager combined together. Uh, and, and thankfully, uh, those models have changed, right? And we have more specialized roles because I think that helps uh, make better decisions and uh, better execution with respect to the goals. Uh, so what we are doing right now is come out with a product management development program within PepsiCo, where we groom people who are interested in product management but haven't had a history of being a product manager to get into the product management vertical, right? Um, and and Product School has been a really great partner, right? So as part of the program, uh, we would select, we will go through a selection criteria and identify those candidates which have, you know, an overlap with the four qualities that we talked about, right? Who are customer centric, who can, who have, uh, who can think big, who are collaborative and are execution driven, right? So if you have, you know. If you are into any of those four areas, uh, there would be some areas where you need to go through, uh, you know, development. So one opportunity of leveraging Product School is that we will then take them through a three months course with Product School uh, while they are still going through their day to day job. And after that, we would assign them an internal PM mentor uh, and uh, take them through a onboarding of a of a. Uh, PM project from end to end, right? So we will, let's say, assign someone with, uh, let's say, supply chain operation uh, experience. We can assign them a pod within the supply chain group and say, okay, uh, you lead this particular development, right? And act as a PM, right? And I, I believe that that's the best uh, best training that you'll have. You will have a, a mentor within that group. Uh, uh, you would have engineers and designers who will work with you. But at the end of the, let's say, three to six months, we would see how the particular person is performing in terms of uh, in the product management world. and then we would uh, you know formally get them into a product management function right so that's been our approach and we tried it out for a couple of uh, couple of iterations this year and it's been pretty pretty successful mm, sounds great sounds like a really like 360 training opportunity for the individuals yeah. um, well, i'm glad it works so well um and um continuing on our theme of um of hiring um, just in general, what are some of the things that you like to look for in the people that you're working with? Maybe some of those softer skills and other attributes. Yeah, yeah. So, so interestingly, PepsiCo, you know, product organizations as well as some tech organizations, uh, we started scaling predominantly in the last uh, two two years, right? I mean, even in 2019, we were pretty small. It's, we started predominantly scaling in 2020 and 2021. Um, so what we look for is people who can work in a pro, uh, pod uh, or a squad structure, right? So, um, so typically our pods would be structured with a PM, with a dedicated PM, with a dedicated designer uh, and engineering lead, and then a set of engineers plus operations uh, resources, right? Like data analysts and, and uh, operation resources. Um, and as an entity, what we look forward is that one, that they are making independent decisions, right? Uh, second, those decisions are aligned with the, the core OKRs of the organization. Um, so OKRs play a very critical role in our day-to-day, -day, uh, as well as our product strategy uh, and execution plan. Uh, third, we look at in collaboration because quite a lot of time, uh, we are cap building capabilities which are connected capabilities, right? So retail media would work with Supply chain will work with sales, will work with connected systems, will work with machine learning pods. So we build capabilities in a very connected for format. So collaboration play a very key role. Uh, and the fourth is like we we would be looking at people who can resolve uh, conflicts uh, through either a dialogue or through an escalation process, right? So those are the four things that we look at when we uh, when we bring teams together, different individuals together to be part of it. 
Awesome. Um, let's dive into leadership a little bit. So throughout your career, you must have worked with um, and reported directly to a bunch of awesome leaders. What yeah. do you think are some of the marks of great leadership? What are the things that set apart the good leaders from the incredible ones that really make an impact? Yeah, I think it's a good question. I think uh, if I if I divide it into two parts, so I have reported to leaders who are business centric and people leaders who are technology centric, right? Um, and you know, in in my history, uh, I think business leaders, the uh, the things that I've really appreciated uh, from business leaders is the push that they give in terms of driving the technology organization towards business goals. Quite a lot of time, um, you know, sometimes the technology organizations build capabilities and are, are prioritizing things, but they are not uh, tied up with the organization goals, right? Uh, so a good hallmark of a business leader that I have reported to is ensuring that there's a push coming from them to ensure that whatever we are building from the technology perspective uh, is impacting the business, right? The second thing is uh, to go beyond the, the current challenges, right? So people are predominantly focused on, okay, what are we doing for 2022? Uh, a big hallmark of, you know, incredible visionary business leaders is to also look at three years perspective, five years perspective, look at the competitive landscape, um, and, you know, bring all of that together in terms of driving the product strategy and product vision, right? So, so I think that is definitely a good, uh, you know, hallmarks of business leaders. On the, on the technology leaders who have led, you know, whom I've reported to, uh, there's some really great examples. And what I've, what I've liked, you know, in that organization is like technology leaders are uh, focused on innovation. Uh, they're focused on executions. They're focused on uh, creating a really great product culture. Um, so those are the things that I've learned from those technology leaders and tried to, uh, so in my current role, I have tried to implement both the things that I've learned from business leaders and things that I've learned from technology leaders uh, to, to drive, you know, my role as a, like a chief product officer for the e-commerce team. Mm -hmm. And what would you say are some of the skills that you either had to uh, intentionally work on or that you sort of gained organically as you moved into more of a position of authority? Yeah, I think, the, again, uh, as I talked about, there are five areas that, you know, my role entails, right? So product vision, um, culture, uh, ta hiring talent, uh, execution, and diversity and inclusion. I think the, some of the most key roles were, or some of the most key learnings were in, in the product vision, right? And how does that product vision align with the organization vision and influence the organization vision? Again, prior to PepsiCo, I, I was predominantly in financial services, right? So I was in MasterCard before that I was in Thomson Reuters. Uh, PepsiCo was a very different industry. So getting the domain, domain knowledge, building credibility uh, took me some time. And again, as people move from industry to industry, I think those are like building credibility, understanding the business, uh, and making decisions that has impact on the business. Uh, I think those are definitely a big learning uh, or onboarding or learning path that stays with people when they change industry. And that was the same with me. And then also culture. Um, so I had to build culture from zero, right? I mean, there was no product organization. There were no product design organization. We had a really great uh, design center within PepsiCo, but uh, but they are not into software design or, or, or let's say commerce design like website design. Um, so, so building the culture from ground up took time and iteration. So I think, you know, as I look back, those were the key learnings that I had from, uh, you know, getting into this role. Mm -hmm. What advice would you have for other leaders out there who are starting to think very consciously about building culture? Because as we said, it's not something that happens organically. It's something that you also have to work on. Do you have any mm -hmm. advice for people in that position? Yeah, I think, uh, as part of, let's say transformation, a uh, lot of companies are going through a transformation culture, right? So they are going from, let's say, a, a legacy to a digital first culture, right? Um, and it's important to answer five critical questions, right? So one is uh, why, right? And why becomes the most critical part because why do we need to change the culture or why should we go into a transformation strategy, right? Uh, why the current format doesn't work um, and, and why should we like, what should we aspire to? I think 
those are the most critical question because if you don't have those rights then you will not be able to drive any of the transformations that you are looking for uh, then the other question that comes to the picture is what do we mean by a, a culture right or what do you mean by a transformative culture right what are the components of a transformative culture how do we measure whether we have been able to make progress or we are we are behind uh, so i think what becomes uh, broad and and a transformation culture or a culture of a product organization is combination of multiple things it's a combination of uh, of written norms as well as non written norms right and then uh, the other questions are like how do we go about doing that like should we should we hire a consulting firm um, who would advise us to do that or should we uh, should we basically have transformation leaders identified within the groups who and and they solicit information or or views from the broader groups and make decisions right uh, i think those are again very important decisions in terms of like once you have answered why and what how do you how do you reach there um and specifically where right so again quite a lot of times the organization fails because they they feel that they want to do a big bang and and transform the entire organization um it's as with software development and lean software uh, and lean lean startup it's always good to experiment and test and learn right so if you're going to a big transformative projects right or or you are make, you're thinking about a major cultural change it's a good idea to try it out with a specific groups or regions or team and then expand it based on your learning right so so i think as as we look at culture both in terms of building a new culture or transforming a culture uh, why what how and where are 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 pretty important questions and strategies that you need to line up <laughs> great advice there um i think we've got time for a couple of audience questions which i can see coming through if you're game to answer a, a couple of questions on the fly um so robin wants to know as a head of product do you influence engineering if yes what's your strategy right uh so thank you for that question again uh, i get a question a lot uh, when i'm talking to other product and engineering leaders right so so i would not say that so again um so how we have structured our teams is that we would have different pods right so if i look back we have five different verticals right like supply chain uh, d2c b2b retail media connected platforms so each of the the verticals have specific teams and pods right and product and engineering leads are our core tenants of those pods right uh, so our core components of those pods and and how we have been able to ensure that we have a strategy which uh, product strategy product road map product vision uh, which uh, which is acceptable and which is the, you know where we get commitment from both engineering and product is that both engineering and product come together to come out with that product vision right and and it's a very conscious exercise that we go through it's a it's a time investment it's an effort investment it's also training uh but we 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 go through that so that you know because otherwise we will not have 100% commitment right product will say that okay this is the product vision but engineering will say that okay i don't believe in that i because i am engineering i am more into execution focus i'll start working on it but but in order to have like 100% commitment as well as the pushback uh, it's important that you know product engineering and design come together when you're looking at product vision uh, road map Uh, KPIs uh, and all those mice and OKRs are a very critical part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of OKRs, we have another question. Uh, could you sh could you shed some light on um, how to create value continually aligned with OKRs? Right. Yeah. I think um, I see another question which is coming in now. Uh, what tools and processes do you use to track product development from strategy roadmap and slide features? Uh, i think the i think i'll probably answer try to answer both of them together because they are kind of overlaps uh, so as i was talking about right so we go through a uh, a stack right when we are looking at uh, vision strategy uh, you know road map so on the top you have the organization's uh, vision and then organization strategy and goals right which becomes the organization okrs so in my group right what we do is that from those organization visions right we identify what's the uh, each team's okrs are for 2022 as well as quarterly like what are their quarterly let's say q1 2022 uh, okrs right um, and then uh, what we do is we identify what are the different so we use something called opportunity solution um, 
three, right? So we look at, okay, the organization goal, let's say the organization goal is growing revenue, let's say hundred percent, right? So that is the one KR one. So that's the key goal. Then we would identify uh, different opportunities that helps us reach that goal, right? Um, so we would have, let's say, you know, you can invest or you can increase the return on investment on, uh, on customer acquisitions, or you can increase um, uh, like checkout conversion rates, or in, you can in reduce uh, uh, or increase supply chain efficiency to reduce time to delay uh, of, of, of shipping products, right? So those are all opportunities. So what we'll do is we will start tagging uh, epics or uh, or major uh, uh, major capability development with those KRs, uh, and then we would put them into roadmap. Now next later roadmap, uh, and that way what we are doing is we are uh, we are creating a thread between organization goals to product goals to you know quarterly uh, milestones, and then tagging our development effort with respect to that, right? So that's that's how you can show continuous formats of development and you can also learn from, you know, if you are delivering value or not and on what areas are you neglecting, right? So those kind of taggings have definitely helped us ensure that, you know, we are building things, but they are directly impact the you know, broader organization goals. And we are not, and we are also investing on the biggest opportunities and not like just looking for things which, uh, which uh, you know provides incremental benefits. Mm -hmm. Excellent answer to two questions there. I hope those were the answers you were looking for, everyone. Yeah. Um, so I see we're coming down to our last couple of minutes, but I think we can squeeze in a few uh, fun, quick questions. What advice would you go back and give your younger self at the start of your career? Uh, I would, I would say, uh, take more risk and probably stay in engineering. <laughs> I, 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 I. I, I so my, my background was an engineer, my first job was an engineer. Uh, and I feel that I really liked being an engineer, right? So uh, again, I'm, I might say just stay as an engineer, but again, but not say that product management is not fun. Product management, I think the impact that you can have from product management is is quite huge. Uh, the, the problem that a lot of organizations face is confusing product management versus project management. Uh, project management doesn't have as much as impact as product management. So. Uh, so I think, again, as I look back, I would also give myself advice that, okay, start thinking from product mindset from an early age rather than think about project management, which is more around execution. Mm -hmm. And what's one thing that you're really excited for in the future of the tech industry? So I think one thing that I'm really excited about the future of tech industry is that I do see technology coming in and solving a lot of legacy problems, uh, uh, you know, in the industry as well as within our day-to-day -day life, right? So whether it's uh, it's simplifying the way that you buy things or simplifying or creating an exciting way of consuming uh, content, right? I do see technology kind of impacting every single areas, right? So, so that's one thing that I'm really excited about. The second thing is a lot of organizations, even large legacy organizations are looking at uh, transforming themselves and are investing in, in digital transformation. Uh, I think that's also another area which I've, I'm feeling very positive about. Mm -hmm. Amazing. What a positive note to end on there. Um, unfortunately, that's all the time we have today. But uh, Manash, thank you so much for talking with me. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks, Ellen. Uh, it's really nice uh, you know, talking to you. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. I hope you got as much out of that as I did. That was really fun. Uh, and we'll see you all in the very next Fireside Chat. Okay, bye. Yes. Thanks, Ellen. Bye.